Hello everyone and welcome back to the next episode of this short series on how to set up Visual Studio Code for programming in Fortran. Today I'd like to show you how you can set up Visual Studio Code in such a way that you can use the GDB, the GNU debugger, as a debugging tool for Visual Studio Code. For this we will first talk about two uh, additional extensions you have to install and afterwards I will show you how to set them up properly for your project and then we will see how it's working on a short example. Without further chit chat, let's dive right in and go to the editor. Here we have Visual Studio Code open and I prepared a small tiny example for you in this main.f90 file. This is basically uh, giving you nothing else uh, than the uh, Euclidean norm of an n-dimensional vector and printing printing it out on the screen. So let us take a look whether it compiles properly. We bring up a terminal, type um, g fortran main.f90. It compiles without any problems and now let us execute. And we see our self-written routine gives us the result 6 point something and the intrinsic routine gives us the result 11.13 and so on and so forth. So there is a difference in uh, the norm calculation and we want to find the error. For this, uh, sometimes or often debugging or vi uh, visual debugging is quite a good thing to do. So let us see how we can set up this. To get GDB running on your um, system and uh, within Visual Studio Code, you first need to install two additional extensions. So go to your extensions uh, menu here and search for C, C++ extension. This is that one up here. And then you have to click install. I already installed it. so. Uh, I'm not able to install it again. And additional to that, we will also have to install Fortran breakpoints. This is uh, that package, Fortran breakpoint support by Ikiban. And you can also install it by clicking the install button. So after you have installed these extensions uh, properly, we will have to do some basic configuration for our project. As already shown in the last videos, um, we would want to set up some ta a task.json file for the compilation process. So we uh, create a new folder, the .vs code folder, and we uh, create a new file that's called task.json. And now we just copy and paste the task.json from our last project over here. And this, as I already explained in the last video, um, there's nothing more than tell Visual Studio Code to run a certain task uh, when executing the task command that is uh, in this uh, case called make. And it will uh, call the make routine with uh, the J4 is um, parallel building, which is not uh, so important in this case. And this will uh, call up the make file we have prepared beforehand, uh, which will take care of the compilation for us. So now we have our task defined. We can check whether it's working by getting the to the control palette, choose task, run task, and execute make. And now we see that the task make has run successfully um, and we have a compiled a.out file up here. So this is running good. If we now go to our uh, project and set a break breakpoint, for example, here in this position and um, we run our task, nothing will happen. So we first have to tell Visual Studio Code how to launch the debugger. Uh, for this, we have to create another configuration file that is called launch.json. And in this launch.json file, we have to include the following. I will copy and paste it shortly and go through it with you in detail. So the version number is not important for us here, but the configurations are important. 
the name is uh, same as in tasks.json. It's a unique name you can uh, you can give this launch. Uh, I called it run GDB for run the GNU debugger. Then, which is important and should be the same as the type, it's a CPP DBG, which is a C++ debugger. Request launch is standard. And then you have for program you have to give uh, the full path to the program executable, uh, which is in this case the workspace root, and there we uh, compile everything to the executable a dot out. You can uh, give a list of uh, extra extra arguments to your program. If you have a program that takes arguments from your command line, you can put them in here. Then you can. Um, Define whether to stop directly when entering the program. I uh, set it to false, so it will not stop in the first line of the pro uh, program. Uh, we have to set the current working directory. We can define whether we want to launch the program in an external console or within the VS Code console. So I choose false, so it will always launch in the VS Code console. My mode is set to GDB. And then something also quite important is the so-called pre-launch task. So if you want to assure that your uh, project is built properly before executing the uh, compiler, you can define here a certain tasks from your tasks.json file um, that has been uh, has to be executed every time you launch the debugger. So in this case, I I set it to make since this is my only task I have defined to build the program itself. Okay, so let us take a look after saving it. If I now put a breakpoint down here, I can now launch the debugger by hitting F5. This will bring up the terminal, will launch the debugger, and you now see that the the debugger hit the breakpoint at line 26 where I set it. To step forward, um, you can use either this command palette up here where you can uh, do a continue, which would continue the program until it hits the next breakpoint. You can do a step over, which means to step over the next to the next line and also step over any subroutine that would be called. You can do a step into, which steps into the next subroutine, as well as a step out, which would step out of the corresponding subroutine. And you can also do a restart and uh, stop the whole process. All the shortcuts are shown here. If you hover over it, you already see directly that continue would mean F5, step over would mean F10. So if I hit F10, I will go directly to the next line. Um, what is also quite uh, quite important is the debugging menu on the left side. Uh, you see it here, it's brought up directly when you start the debugger. And here you have all the variables, all the local variables that are defined in the function where you're having a breakpoint set at the moment. So we have in this function the iterator variable i that you can see here. We have the result variable res and we have the input variable vector that you can see here. You can also set watch points. That means you can define, for example, I to be shown here. If this is quite hand comes in quite handy, if you have a bunch of variables up here and you only want to watch certain variables, so it is sometimes really good to only have the these two or three variables you really want to watch down here. Um, then you can see the call stack. Uh, displayed here, which is quite short in this case, and um, quite hidden down at the bottom, you see the uh, breakpoints section where all your breakpoints are defined. So if I would set another breakpoint, for example, in line 31 here, I will see it pop up in this breakpoint section. And here I can manually activate and deactivate breakpoints. I can activate and deactivate all breakpoints by clicking on this icon. I can set a new breakpoint and I can also remove all breakpoints by, by clicking here. So this is really straightforward and self-explanatory, I think. 
if we now go shortly to uh, through this uh, example what we uh, see here in the norm function that i wrote is the output in the end is not what we would expect it yeah so uh, let us take a deeper look and take for example uh, an eye on the variable i so if we step now through this routine we see i is now one and if we go to the next loop oh the i popped to three so this might be an error because we usually want to iterate through the whole vector and not not only every second entry so let's take a look uh yeah here we have a typo so this should be one and now let us restart by hitting Control shift f5 this will restart the um, the debugger now we take a look again going through it f10 f10 ah yeah okay now it's working now i is two next step it's three four and so on and so forth so let us disable all the breakpoints hit f5 to run through the whole program and we see down here in our terminal our self-written routine gives us the same result as the intrinsic routine okay i think that's it for a really short introduction how to set up gdb with uh, visual studio code i hope it helped uh, you and you can adapt it to your own working process if you have any questions uh, just leave a com comment down below i will uh, answer it as soon as possible and um, yeah as always if you like this video subscribe stay healthy and see you soon bye